Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We got some more bite-sized business advice for you today. And this is this is not bite-sized. This is a big deal, okay? I love this topic. We're going to dive into it. I'm very passionate about it. And we're going to dive in with a very special guest. But ultimately, it's how to build a business that will scale sustainably, most importantly, without you running the business and making all the decisions. So I love this topic. I'm excited to tear it all apart. We can't cover all this in 20 minutes, but we're going to see what we can do. So Eric Williams, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Great, great. Thanks to be here, Brandon. Looking forward to a great conversation with you. Yeah. So we have to we have to first identify the problem, right? There's there's people who own businesses, think they own businesses, but they just own jobs. Am mm -hmm. I? Are, are we? Have we offended people already? Let's start there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, and, and there's nothing wrong with that either. If someone wants to build a business that's essentially their job, that's cool. If that's the level you want to play at, that's great because you get to have some flexibility uh, around that. But, you know, as you as you probably see all the time, Brandon, if you are planning to build a business, a system that gets outcomes repeatedly and consistently with good, good, good quality outcomes, you have to do things differently. It's a different mindset, a different ethos that you need to bring into building a business rather than building a job for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, there's there's no shame in building a building a business that you want to run, and it's it's a lifestyle business, if you will. Um, I think that's a beautiful thing to be self employed. What we're talking about here is when you get to that point where inevitably you will probably be some sort of burned out, and you want to go further. You want to step away from the business. You want other people to decide things for you. That's building a structure and building a, a sellable and scalable business. So I want to dive into that side of things and say, okay, we've built a business, we have employees, we've plateaued. Is that is that typically where you you would get called in to work with a business around that plateau? Or is it because they want to kind of go go forward and keep growing? Yeah, it really depends. And a lot of the businesses that I work with uh, could be just even folks who are just starting out still essentially solopreneurs might have, you know, an admin assistant or, or some, you know, small team uh, up to about 50, 100 people. Uh, I've seen this hit at a variety of different stages. Usually you're hitting a plateau at a variety of stages through the growth phase. Um, and you could be constantly growing, right? So you're you, the, what you need to do to go from one employee to five looks different than going to 10 or 15, 20. And so you kind of hit these plateaus of different things needed to be systematized. I was uh, talking to a client the other day, and you know he was saying that he's been operating under the essentially the standard operating procedures, the model that he built that was quite successful in growing to the size that he's at, but he's been stuck for about 10 years. He didn't even realize it until we really started to dig into it that He's just been running the same business for that period. And that's why he's been hitting all of these road roadblocks in terms of being overworked, overwhelmed, totally burnt out, you know, not even kind of operating in a brain fog during the day when trying to just check off stuff in, on his checklist. And he'll go for a whole week and realize nothing was even checked off of his high priority stuff. It's just wild what people kind of the habits that they get into when they're overwhelmed and overworked in their business. And it's like, no wonder they can't bust through that next level because they just need an idea. They need an identity shift and they need to shift the practices of what they're doing in their business on a day to day basis. Yeah, I want to I want to dive into there to the identity shift, because I think that's the probably the first and most important place to start, because that's that's really what's going to hold you back is how you see yourself. But uh, a good analogy that I, I like to use and you summed it up perfectly is Think about like a, a lizard or a snake when they shed their skin when they're growing. Like you have to get rid of old things that, that are going to hold you back or it's going to be super uncomfortable. Imagine like a, a 40 year old man wearing a 5T clothes like for a toddler. Like that's not going to look very good out in public. So <laughs> I, I'm glad I could leave you with that little image here today, Eric. So let's dive into the identity piece. When, when you start working with people, it sounds like that's where you start first. The how they identify both themselves and their business structure. What, is, what does that process look like to unpack and then transform that? 
Yeah, yeah, it's always interesting. And and I don't always get into it on the front end because a lot of folks when they're burnt out and overwhelmed, they say, I don't need to change my identity. I need to solve the practical nuts and bolts of my business. And so that's usually where the if we're talking about symptoms versus what actually needs to be done, the symptoms are always, you know, things are messy, hitting emergency after emergency, days look just like fire drills rather than actually moving the tangible stuff forward. But not to miss the identity shift component of the work. That is really where the the rubber hits the road because you can fix everything that you can in the business. You can have a, a perfectly, you know, perfectly tuned machine of a business. But if the business owner, the person who's running that business, is doesn't shift their identity, the perspectives, how they're making those thousands of little decisions throughout the day, they are not going to make it because they're going to fall back into their own old habits and behaviors that got them in trouble in the first place, that made it a mess, that made it constant emergencies, that created that constant sense of urgency and just barely hitting deadlines or working on deadlines that were things that were due, you know, yesterday or last week and just constantly being on that hamster wheel of getting things done. If you don't work, do the deep work on fixing and shifting those beliefs, those habits and move into the identity of a CEO, if you're moving from 10 employees to 20, for example, uh, not that it's always about the size of the, you know, size of the team, but that's a, a good example of how big, how standardized th things need to be, how good the training of your new employees need to be, all that sort of thing. So moving from 10 to 20, you have to be a different kind of CEO at that moment. And you have to become that CEO first and then make decisions that you need to, to shift and grow your business to that next phase, right? You essentially have to transform and grow out of your old identity first. And that's where you can put the gas on. I'm not saying that there's not a lot of nuts and bolts of the business and the practical stuff and the scaling up that you need to do to, to reach that level. But the shift in mindset is what helps you make all of those small decisions about what to learn, where to focus, where you need to spend your time on revenue growth and driving profit. You know, how are you hiring that next person on the team? All of those things get determined by kind of your base operating procedure during that moment. And that's what needs to get an upgrade first. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, you're saying the the nuts and bolts, the SOPs of the business, like, yeah, of course they're important. Obviously everybody knows that, but you're also talking about the the nuts and bolts and the SOPs of, of you, of what's, what, what's going on inside. So you are starting with the nuts and bolts. It's just not exactly where people think you're going to start. And I think what's interesting about this, you said, you have clients. So it's very clear that you don't advertise that you're going to start with the internal work because nobody wants to do that. So how do you go about doing this process with people um, and, and making them realize, first of all, we need to make this shift and then start to unpack this stuff and take on that new identity. I'm, I'm assuming it's not as simple as writing. I'm a CEO on the mirror in the morning. Like what, how do you actually help people put on that new identity? Yeah. Yeah. That is some of the fun work that we get to do to really unpack what's been, you know, what are the driving factors of how they're making decisions? What, you know, what's their, where are they at, right? We need to take stock of where they are at personally, how they make decisions, what are they been getting in trouble with during that time already, uh, and what we need to shift to. And so it's partly building in those habits and, and routines. It's building some mindfulness practices. Uh, about visualizing and understanding and embodying that role that they need to have, but putting some identity pieces to it. How would that person make decisions? And then you start to, you, then you wind it back. So you kind of envision what that future self needs to look like. What is that going to look like? And, you know, you can even break it up into what does the schedule look like? What kind of roles and responsibilities are you having? And then you have this vision of where you need to go, kind of the directions, the map. And then you work it back into, well, so what does that mean I need to do today? How am I making a di different decision today to prioritize getting to that next stage? Uh, it's very fun to unpack, you know, it gets into a little bit of therapy counseling type of thing. Usually there's a lot of stuff that a lot of entrepreneurs need to unpack. Um, not to say that it, it gets, that there's, you know what I mean? There's just a lot to unpack that everybody has their own unique kind of nuts and bolts that are driving their decision making, uh, things that they learned in childhood, things that they learned in high school and college that are driving early, early parts of their business that are driving different decision making and framework times that they were burned in the past, employees that they had to let go, 
because they kept on delegating stuff to to that employee that they never performed. Just, you know, the baggage that comes along with growing the business and unpacking what's the real stories that they're telling themselves that are based in data or what stories are they telling themselves that are really not real? Like we, we, in a way, get to determine our reality. A lot of the times we don't know. We may not know factually one way or another, but we need to understand when those decisions are when we have some autonomy over how we make decisions, how we interpret the world. Is it that employees are always lazy or is it that I didn't do my job and own that I didn't do a good job delegating to that person? Both of those things, one of those, each of those things could be true. But if you don't know what's which one's true, you can decide the one that is the most empowering in that situation so that you can move forward. Because one doesn't empower you to make any decisions differently moving forward, and one does. So I'm not saying that's the only thing to unpack that's either true or not. But we have to really understand, well, what are the stories? Humans really make a, a lot of stories about interpreting the world around them. And it's really interesting to unpack what stories are getting in the way of them actually moving into that new identity. Yeah, it's super powerful. And that's the power of stories can't be understated i always uh play this game with my wife where um if if like a neighbor is doing something weird i'll just make up some totally random story about how they're like a serial killer or something and that's what she'll remember about that neighbor like five years later yeah. totally fictional story just like <laughs> they took out the garbage can at at two in the morning they must be a serial killer <laughs> like whatever uh yeah. but those stories that we've made up about ourselves we carry with us as our belief system and so don't do that for yourself but also understand where where your decision making and your operating model is coming from as a human being very powerful for being a leader um so i'm curious you you said we have we have four steps to build a, a business that uh can grow and is scalable without us um help me start to understand we probably can't get through all four steps but but what are what are these steps and, and where can we start with them all oh, right yeah brendan that's a good a good point any kind of solution like this where you need to make a really big change in your life and your business, it's if it could be solved in a one minute, two minute, uh, you know, brief, brief it explanation. To this if episode. that's all you need, then go do it. If this if you just need me to walk through the steps and you can say, OK, great, I'm going to go do this, implement this. Uh, great. Um, and so that's why I try to lay this out, because a lot sometimes people can figure it out themselves. They can put the pieces together. Uh, but really, the first one is doing the audit, the assessment, the understanding of what the current status of the business is. And this is really about understanding both the official kind of roles and responsibilities you'd give yourself, but also how many calls are you getting a day? How many emails are you responding to? Where's your time going in a very practical sense uh, of the day? How many times you're dealing with an emergency? So it's essentially understanding where your time is getting sucked up. Uh, and a lot of the time, it's those unofficial responsibilities. You don't even realize how much time you're spending on this fire drill during the day. You know it was a lot. But once you start to actually put numbers to these things that understand where your time's going, it becomes very clear what's a priority and what's not a priority. And that's where we can then unpack it using the the model that, that I use, which is structured deconstruction, to really break it apart and assign, give everything a job moving forward. Uh, step two is creating a clear and comprehensive vision of your new CEO identity. We said we do that early, uh, but that's an important thing to understand. So we haven't actually implemented anything in these first two steps. You know, you're figuring out understanding what's going on in your business and then understanding where you need to go with your CEO identity. OK, and then step three is where you want to start putting these pieces in, of the puzzle back together. So using structured deconstruction to break up, break it apart uh, around five different measures, including elimination, batching, delegation, systematization, and, and automation. Working through this systematically step by step. Because a lot of the time, the devil's in the details, right? You may have approached systematizing and trying to grow your business and just kept it at a conceptual level. But really, this happens in a nuts and bolts way. And we're talking about taking your CEO identity the values that that entails and the priorities you want to bring into the next stage of your life, that will help you make decisions about what to do with all of these things that are creating a mess in your business, right? That's why these are pieces, the pieces that we need to put together. And then number four is about developing and honing your leadership skills 
and the the practice of what you're doing, the habits and behaviors and the leadership skills you're bringing moving into the future to implement the new operations of the business. Because a lot of the time you're identifying those pieces that are missing, the skills that you don't have. It might be people you need to bring onto your team. You might be able to need to hone in on your communication skills. Maybe that was the part of the assessment that really, you know, there was a gap there in terms of how you were delegating your work effectively. So that's where then you need to scale up because it's a matter of implementing the new, the new way your business needs to be run. I like that model because it's it, the way I picture it is always, uh, if you were to go to the doctor and say, um, you know, I, I have brain cancer, I need surgery tomorrow. The doc, no good doctor would just cut your head open. They, they would evaluate you. That's the audit. Right. And say, mm -hmm. you just have a splinter in your right index finger. Like we can, we can fix this and, and it's not going to require brain surgery. But as, as business owners, we often, we go right for solution without really understanding, first of all, what the problem is and where it is, and then yeah. developing that plan to fix it. So those first two steps, you probably see a massive lift in both the identity and also the direction of the business before even doing anything. Am I, am I right by saying that? Yeah. 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 And, and not to say that we don't, usually I'm working with overwhelmed overworked business owners. And so in terms of the steps that we go through on a practical level, there's, it's a mix of mechanics and identity throughout, because sometimes there's usually a lot of low hanging fruit in terms of saving an hour here, five hours here, 10 hours a week, you know, and even if you do that over the course of the first week or a couple weeks, that's a lot of time that they're getting off their plate that they can reinvest in growing and scaling their business uh, and really prioritizing and problem solving around this. Because a lot of the time they're just over overwhelmed with this, the stuff they need to do and clearing the plate, clearing the table a bit on the front end gives them that mental space to actually start problem solving in their business again. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like step one is continue to listen to Harmonious at Lunch so we can at least make you laugh throughout the day. That's yeah. awesome. And then step two is uh, visit your website and you have a you have a webinar for us to go deeper because yeah, we can't we can't go over this in 10 minutes here. But um, tell me a little bit about the webinar you have for for the listener. Yeah, so it really dives deeper into some of the common mistakes you may be making in terms of missteps on delegating things that you've had trouble with letting go in the past, the mistakes you're making that are really hurting your business at this stage. And then it dives into the these four steps in more detail in terms of how you actually put these things into practice in your business starting today. Uh, so definitely go to willity.com slash watch, dig into that webinar. If there's a ton of great information, practical stuff that you can put into place in your business. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's a super cool gift. Definitely go check that out. Um, and there's more in the show notes down below as well. So I, I, I like to ask at the end of these episodes, Eric, we, we believe at What If that powerful questions get you powerful answers and powerful results. So in terms of a an overwhelmed overworked business owner as it pertains to this episode and everything we talked about in your four steps what is one question that you would like to give the listener to think about for the rest of the day the rest of this week that will get them on that path from you know out of sort of the the fog that they're in now if you will onto that path of being an empowered business owner that doesn't have to be at the center of running their business Great. That's a that this is a great question. And what comes to mind immediately is think about what are the costs of continuing as is? What are the costs to your family, the, your time with your kids, the time the time with your wife? Is your is your marriage on the rocks because you're spending too much time at work? Are your finances a mess because this business is a mess and is just not performing at the level you need to? Think really deeply about what it's costing you today, what it's costing you tomorrow, what's costing you next year. And are you prepared to continue to endure that cost? Or are you ready to do something about it? Because at the end of the day, commitment is the most important thing to move forward. It's not this, there's strategies are out there. I have a great system, a great step by step strategy to take people through. But at the end of the day, if you're committed to solving this, find where your level of commitment is and go solve it. That was quite the question, my friend. You really slapped us through the microphone there. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Go ponder that for the rest of the day. Eric, thank you for being a guest on this show. This was phenomenal. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. It was great talking with you. For those of you watching and listening, wherever you are, first things first, 
Go watch the webinar, willity.com slash watch. Go check out the other resources in the show notes. I really appreciate Eric coming here today. And also subscribe. We want to make sure you don't miss a minute of this completely ridiculous show where we hopefully every single day of the week will just disrupt the way you think about your business and help you get along your path to that next level a little bit quicker. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on tomorrow's episode.